think we can kick off this session. Um, thanks, Tracy and Eliza, for being with us today. So, um, hi, Widya, and hi, Mini. Um, thanks for joining our session today with Rocket. So, just to give everybody a brief uh, overview about Rocket, Rocket is a global leader in plant based ingredients and a pioneer of new vegetal proteins. They have the largest patent portfolio in the sector of uh, pea based products. And in today's session, we have Tracy Lim, who is the regional technical developer in uh, Singapore, and also Eliza, who's the Greater Asia Manager from Rocket, who have kindly agreed to be with us here today. They will share about Rocket's application in Neutralis plant proteins and how food innovators like yourself can leverage on their expertise to improve the taste and texture of your products. All right, hi, um, and thanks for taking the time for, um, to join us today. Um, so I will take you through a brief introduction to Rocket and provide some market insights to the plant-based space before I hand over to Tracy, who will give you an introduction to our Neutralis pea protein range and speak more specifically about formulating plant-based meat alternatives and dairy alternatives. Uh, we'll conclude with how you may be able to engage with us and also take any questions that you might have. Um, next, thanks Tracy. Okay. So Rocket, if you're not already aware, is the global leader of plant-based ingredients and plant proteins. We also happen to be a leading provider of pharmaceutical excipients as well. We're constantly innovating at Rocket, um, offering our customers a wide product range and versatility um, with what they can do with those ingredients. Our mission is to use plant-based resources and to collaborate with partners in industry to arrive at an ingredient offering to better feed people and treat patients. Our ambition is to unlock the potential of nature to offer the best ingredients for the food, nutrition and health markets. Next, thanks Tracy. Okay, um, so Rocket was founded in 1933. We'll just go back one. Thank you. Um, where it all began with the potato and the extraction of potato starch. Today, we derive ingredients from four origins, uh, potato, wheat, corn, and pea. And from those, we provide proteins, fibers, starch, and starch derivatives to the global market. Rocket is still a family-owned French company that operates in more than 100 countries, um, supplied by 25 manu manufacturing sites um, in the network. We have a turnover of approximately three and a half billion euro and we employ just over 8,000 people worldwide. We have 300 people dedicated to R&D and we file around 40 patents per year. Thanks, Tracy. So with more than 40 years of experience in plant proteins, Rocket was one of the pioneers in plant protein specialties in the food, nutrition and health markets. We're active along the full value chain, so from farm to fork, um, from seed development to working with farmers and seeking out new botanic sources, to application development with customers within markets so that products are adapted to local tastes, um, and in order to serve the global market, we operate across the world, either with direct commercial teams or via our distribution network to reach our global customer base with the largest pea protein portfolio in the market, sourced from our two manufacturing sites in two continents. Thanks, Tracy. Rocket was the first pea protein producer in the world uh, with our first manufacturing site based in Northern France. This was expanded and improved in 2018. In 2019, we bought a dedicated extrusion facility in the Netherlands where we produce extruded products predominantly for the meat alternatives market. And last year, at the very tail end of 2021, we opened the world's largest pea protein facility our second site in Manitoba, Canada, which serves mainly the North American market. We also opened a center of expertise at our French site where we conduct extensive R&D and innovation activities in the plant proteins arena. 
Rocket have built a unique position in the market with our plants close to raw materials and our end markets. And we underpin this with our strong innovation mindset. Thanks, Trace. So I'll conclude our introduction to Rocket with an overview of our R&D and technical network described here as global, global but local. We have R&D centres located around the world where we can conduct global innovation projects, but where we can also work on local market driven innovations. We also have application centres situated in key markets and regions, which allow us to develop end applications suited to local markets we operate within. And supporting these activities, we have a team of technical developers like Tracy, who support local activities while also drawing on global knowledge and who support our customers closely in their end applications, fostering information sharing, troubleshooting, innovation and partnershiping. So moving on to market insights, I'll start with a quote from an analyst at Bloomberg. Food related consumer habits often come and go as fads, but plant based alternatives are here to stay and grow. The expanding set of product options in the plant based industry is contributing to plant alternatives becoming a long term option for consumers around the world. And I think we're certainly seeing that ourselves here. Yeah. Uh, just next. Thanks, Tracy. Okay, so here we have some examples of recent launches from around the world, which you may have seen as well. Um, we've got a cheese free cheese from Grounded Foods in the US, which is produced via fermentation from cauliflower and hemp. Um, We've seen Nestle's iconic Kit Kat in a vegan format that was launched in the UK and the Netherlands. And just staying with Nestle, they launched a plant-based latte last year in Japan and also a range of dairy-free RTD beverages in Malaysia. And Burger King launched their plant Whopper um, widely in South Korea. So I think it's fair to say that the plant-based phenomenon is certainly here to stay and it's growing. So whilst there's been a lot of focus and attention on dairy and meat substitutes in the plant-based space, we should point out that other categories are seeing innovation and significant growth. On the left, we've caught out the food and beverage subcategories with a plant-based claim with the highest level of growth from 2016 to 2020 in the APAT region. I think it's not surprising that the dairy alternative drink um, subcategory is not growing at as high a rate as the other categories, given that these are quite mature in the market already. On the right, we've just got another couple of product examples. Um, one out of India where tempeh has been repositioned and modernized. And from China, this is a ready to, ready to use plant-based meat topping. And here we have the percentage of new food and beverage launches that have a plant-based claim in Asia for the five years between 2016 and 2020, where the greatest activity has been seen in Japan, Malaysia and India. Thanks, Tracy. So what are we seeing as the key drivers for growth of plant-based launches? The strength of these drivers that you can see here uh, vary across the markets in the region. But overall, we'd say that flexitarianism and health awareness are the major drivers in all markets. Healthy ageing is significant in both Southeast Asia and Northeast Asia because of the growing ageing population in these markets, which are driving demand for both high protein content in food and also healthier plant-based options especially in countries like Japan and Singapore, where the current recommendation of protein intake is not met. Sustainability, on the other hand, is more prominent in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, I think, you know, while it's, it's fair to say that there's rising awareness in sustainability in Southeast Asia, it's certainly not the main driver for consumers 
it's more of a nice to have or a bonus, um, but we wouldn't say that it's a major, major re reason for consumers to buy. Variety in the diet is also a key driver where nearly half of Asian consumers are saying that it's one reason for considering plant-based food. Lastly, we've got food safety. The global pandemic accelerated the shift towards alternative proteins that was already gaining traction across Asia Pacific. Consumers' anxiety around um, um, you know, possible links between wild animal meat and the new virus led to soaring sales as consumers sought out safe and healthy alternatives during the outbreak. During the first two months after the coronavirus outbreak, Hong Kong-based plant-based meat company Green Monday reported that online sales had more than doubled. Thank you, Tracy. In 2010, more than half of meat substitute launches in APAC came with a vegetarian claim. That is, they targeted a niche group of consumer who didn't consume meat. A vegetarian diet, as I'm sure you know, consists of vegetables, grains, and sometimes eggs, and sometimes dairy products. Mock meats that were sold in the region to vegetarians had to go through a major image overhaul due to their highly processed nature and low nutritional value. Mock meat launches in the past five years have been promoted as being GM free and vegan and animal free. From 2015, APAC became the rising market for flexitarians. Again, I think, as you know, um, are described as those who occasionally substitute meat in their diet with plant-based protein. Flexitarianism, or casual vegetarianism, is the new motto for all F&B players. Sonali Figueres of Green Queen Media says that most of the second generation meat replacement products, such as Omni Pork, are focused on the flexitarian market. They do not market to vegans, and that is why the term plant-based has become so used in recent years. The term vegan is considered by many brands to be alienating to the mass or non-vegan consumer. Plant-based food and beverages, I think you would agree, can offer lucrative growth opportunities. Thanks, Tracy. So what we're also seeing is that the young or <laughs> those under 35 are choosing to go plant-based more than older age groups. I won't go into that one any further, actually. Um, Tracy, just next slide, thank you. And finally, when you're looking at plant protein sources for plant-based food and beverages, what we're seeing globally is that pea protein is becoming the protein of choice. Within the APAC region, soy protein still dominates in terms of plant-based launches, but the growth rate is slowing, and we're seeing pea protein growing at a faster rate than soy, more than two times, um, as I understand it, with more than 40% growth in launches. I'll pass on to you now, Tracy, um, uh, who will take us through Rocket's Neutralist range and how you can formulate plant-based food with success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eliza. Yes, so we have seen um, the food revolutions going on with um, plant-based. So now today for Rockets, we are pleasant to be uh, invited to do the sharings, how you can actually formulate plant-based food with success. And we are actually looking in two different types of applications. So first is the meat alternatives and later parts is on the dairy alternatives. Understands that um, today is right now we have... Um, guest that is coming from the startups, from uh, Meatless Kingdoms and also more fruits that is more focused on the meat alternatives. So please play with me the dairy alternatives at the latest few slides for the end of this um, webinar sharing. So for Rockets, what we actually, our missions is really offering the best of natures. And we actually focus on the yellow pea proteins for Neutralis uh, pea proteins brands. So there are six pillars that we are actually looking at for Neutralis uh, pea protein. Basically is the sustainability, clean nutrition, 
nutrition, functional and indulgence versatile, and also not a major allergen for the neutralist pea protein. So when we look at sustainability, there is good uh, indications coming from the uh, yellow pea crops that you can see in this slide that, you know, um, yellow pea crop is really a very planet friendly uh, agriculture crops because it actually uses really uh, less water and, you know, less land use compared to other types of plant proteins and also to animals protein or to animals uh, farming. So if we talk, look at the uh, greenhouse carbon emission footprint, it's, it's also one of the lowest uh, plant proteins or lowest uh, crops that give the lowest carbon emissions. So that's where is the uh, fix the checkbox of the sustainability. And when we talk about clean ingredients for neutralis, we are actually looking at the process on how rockets uh, utilize the methods, a very clean patented process methods to uh, produce the neutralized pea protein isolates. So neutralized actually comes from yellow split peas, as you can see, and the initial uh, protein contents in the yellow split peas uh, crop itself uh, in, in the lagoon is only 25% protein content. So through the clean patented process, uh, basically, the only solvent used in this uh, separation processing is only water. So basically, it's going through the milling process via the separations through water to separate out the different fractions of the protein, starch, and fibers. And we actually concentrate the um, protein content via precipitations and mound drying to have the neutralized pea protein isolates at a very uh, good protein content at 85% in dry substance. And we will say that um, for neutralized pea protein is an uh, excellent plant protein source because it actually is considered a complete protein with well-balanced amino acid profile. It has the nine essential amino acid profile um, that is in the uh, pea protein itself, so which makes it a very complete protein. So when we look at uh, how we actually look at the protein content or you know how we actually assess whether the plant protein is of a good quality nutritionally, we usually look at the pediacus. And for neutralized pea protein, we have demonstrated, so we have studies to demonstrate that our pea, neutralized pea protein is pediacus, the protein digested corrected amino acid profile is greater than 93. So for dairy proteins, it's usually at 100. And recently, there is also a study that is done by Rockets that we are able to conclude the new methodology of dias, uh, which concludes at uh, dias hundreds. So this is another uh, complementary uh, methodology to demonstrate the excellent nutritional quality of neutralized pea protein. So apart from the... Uh, nutritional uh, aspects on in terms of the protein quality. Uh, what Rocket also addressed is the scientific ed evidence on other types of nutritional benefits. And we do have studies done on the satiety and weight management for blood glucose management, sports nutrition, as well as for senior nutrition that is more for the acceptance hedonic satisfaction level, how acceptable uh, the seniors are towards our uh, products, food products that is fortified with neutralized pea protein so that they can increase their protein intake, which generally that is lacking uh, as you age. So this slide is really to give you a very quick, uh, nice overview that not all plant proteins are equal in a sense, especially if you look at the protein quality as mentioned, the pediacus, the first uh, row that the pediacus for the protein digested character amino acid. So not all plant proteins that you can see, um, you know, for wheat, almonds, oats, and rice, they actually have quite a very low level uh, of the uh, pediacus value, which means that they are actually not a complete amino acid, not a complete protein, or there are certain limiting amino acids prof uh, in, in this type of plant proteins. So for example, in the rice or oats or uh, almonds, in the cereals uh, proteins, usually they lack of lysine, the essential amino acids, and which is actually a um, very high levels found in uh, the yellow pea protein, which is found in neutralis. 
So there is also a complementary effects for our neutralist pea proteins that combines with other type of plant proteins to actually to achieve you know, the hundreds pediacus. So, and if you next look at the allergens, so for pea proteins, you can actually do not need to declare it because it's not in the positive uh, list of the allergens. So typically, um, you know, if you look at dairy, soy, oats, almond sweet, these are common allergens that you need to declare on your products. And when we talk about intolerance agents or anti-nutritional factors, um, there's none in uh, pea protein. So these anti-nutritional factors are usually the ones that actually inhibits the, uh, you know, the digestions part of the humans or you know, how the bioavailability is. So as you can see, um, pea proteins, there's none for anti-nutritional factors. And the growing of pea uh, crops is actually non-GMO crops. And it's also going through the safe process uh, as mentioned earlier via the clean separations uh, process to produce a uh, neutralized pea protein at 85% protein content in dry substance. And following that, um, this slides will show you the, um, the range of the functionalities that we are looking at for neutralized pea proteins and which are the types of neutralized pea proteins that Rocket is offering. So we do have the uh, protein, pea protein isolates and also the texturized pea protein. And the functionality, generally, we are looking at the gelling performance for foaming emulsification, um, being high solubility and also heat process stables. So when we look at, for example, in dairy alternatives um, for UHT or retorts, um, generally, these are fairly stable for neutralized pea protein. And we also have demonstrated earlier on the health benefits for the sports nutrition, for the blood glucose management, for the excellence protein uh, quality demonstrated by the pediatrics for the diets. And we have range that offers tasty and nutritious uh, food recipes that we can also share with our customers uh, with you. And so far, um, I think the non-GMO verified, we also have uh, positions on this non-GMO verified that's basically more well-known in the US. So it's an external accreditations body. So we have that as well. And also not to neglect that pea proteins, one of the uh, values is also not a major allergen. And we also having uh, exploring the organic versions for neutralized pea protein. So next slides, I will actually show you the range of uh, rocket pea proteins uh, that we offer to offer the clean nutrition for your specific needs. So for pea protein isolates, we have a wide range for different type of application, for example, in the plant-based meat alternative, in dressing and sauces or snacks, or even confectionaries, uh, specialized nutrition or high proteins or RTD applications or dairy alternatives as well as clinical nutrition. And we also have the texturized uh, pea protein range. Specifically, there are four different types that are available in our regions. That comes in different size and shapes. So I will elaborate more. And the texturized pea protein are typically the one that you will be more interested for the plant-based meat alternative applications. So just a side note that, you know, for Neutralis, it's actually a clean and sustainable yellow pea uh, proteins. It's healthy and nutritious, easy to use and tasty, not a major allergen. So what you can position or a potential clean will be gluten-free, non-soy, non-wheat, non-dairy. So let's focus in terms for the plant-based meat alternatives. So I'll first start with sharing the slides of the available recipes that um, our CTS applications teams that has developed for the plant-based meat alternatives. So these are just some uh, selections out from our recipe library. So you can see that we have um, different types for plant-based meat alternative to meet, meet certain types of uh, animals protein or, or meat products. For example, the plant-based burger that tastes like a plant-based for beef uh, to mimic the beef. We also have plant-based fish steaks, crab cakes. Uh, we also have the plant-based nuggets, sausages, tuna, and we also have the local twist, which is the Asian uh, sort of Asian uh, cuisines that we have also developed 
for the seasonal like plant-based uh, bakwa that is very popular in Singapore and China and Malaysia. So I think that is also very relevant to meatless kingdoms. That is something that is similar to the meatless uh, jerky. So this is the plant-based jerky type, but uh, with the flavors that is tailored or customized to, to Singapore Rins or Malaysian palate. And then we have this vegetarian meatball tom yum soup that's also with the localizations, Asian localizations, and also the Japanese curry with our texturized pea protein. So all these are made possible with our neutrally texturized pea protein, mainly as the, the core ingredients. And there's also other ingredients that would, we would actually incorporate in, for example, our pea protein isolates for further protein enrichment, or with our rockets, our specialty starches, or pea fibers in it to enhance that, you know, the types of emulsifications or biting texture. So beside the recipes that I showed earlier, we also comes with, uh, you know, we also did some uh, videos, cooking, home chef cooking videos with our neutrally texturized pea protein. And this one was specifically with our range, which is T70S. Uh, that's we have cooking videos on steamed dumpling, plant-based otaotas, and also Thai basil, uh, minced chicken for plant-based version with our texturized T70S. And we also have uh, did something with Vietnamese uh, rice roll with another grades of our texturized pea protein. So for this uh, slide, that shows the four different types of texturized pea proteins that Rockets offer. So it comes in different size, shapes, dimensions, and really to give you a very wide range of uh, you know, to play around with, to develop during your product development phase because um, different types of the texturized pea proteins or the sizes and shapes will give you different type of textures that you might want that you need it. So we are also looking at, you know, um, pairing of different types of texturized pea proteins that suits your needs. So the first ones will be the T70S. This is the texturized pea proteins that comes in a strips forms that typically is about one to two cm uh, average size. And this gives the highest firmness. And generally uh, we would recommend this for, you know, if you're looking for plant-based uh, meat textures, that is something like a burger patties that you want high firmness or high elasticity, more chewing bites to it, more resistant to it. And this is something that is good to offer. And we have two different grades that, um, which is TP70G, the last one that you can see. Um, this basically is comes in a granule shapes, and we also have TP65Ms. This comes in a very mean types of flakes um, that resembles like breadcrumbs. You would think of it. So basically, the the goodness of you know using TP70G or TP65M is depending on your process limitation. So these are the only two grades that you don't actually require any um, additional shredding steps process or grinding to reduce the particle size because they are already come at about 0.5 cm on average uh, size dimension. So with that, you know basically you can just rehydrate the texturized pea protein and then um, blend in with your other types of dry ingredients or your flavors, form and shape it. So this is a very convenient types of texturized pea proteins that eliminates the shredding step that you would need to typically if you use a bigger chunk pieces. So with that of a smaller size dimension, it means that the firmness will be much reduced. So it has a medium firmness to it. And, but however, because of the medium firmness, that also comes with the better juiciness to it or, you know, more uh, juice or, you know, oils and water binding to it. That's, you know, if you were to bite off it, it's giving you more tenderness, softness to it and juiciness. So we have the last grade, which is TPC. This is the grade that uh, we actually recommend or specifically design for plant-based seafood. So this gives a more uh, fibrous textures because it comes in the bigger chunk. So we are looking at about uh, average or three, three to four cm, that kind of a uh, big size. 
chunk and this is really recommended because of the long fibrousness that you can see from the texturized pea protein itself and that's where usually you need it for the um, plant-based fish for example and it also gives a very tenderness uh, textures to it but we do have uh, you know customers that do pairing of different types of uh, different texturized pea proteins to give uh, a specific textures that are looking up. So this, the next slides, uh, just to show you the plant-based total solutions that Rockets can offer. For example, if you look at um, a burger, a plant-based burger. So we are not only having the texturized pea proteins that make the uh, plant-based meat patty. We do have plant-based uh, solutions for the um, dressing as well as we also have solutions for the plant-based cheese. And we can also have the um, bread bun as a non-gluten uh, gluten-free solution to it. So this is the plant-based total solutions that Rockets can offer. So is there any questions so far? If not, then I'll move next to the plant-based dairy alternatives. So maybe it's to, to both um, sharing. When we talk about plant-based dairy alternatives, um, basically we have to look at you know, the types of functionalities or the types of applications. So for example, in a plant-based uh, coffee, you want it to be stable and there's no protein coddling. So it has to be heat stable. And for example, in the ice cream, it has to be good visibility or creaminess to it as well as, you know, in our RTD um, dairy alternatives, you know, it has to be good emulsions, um, no sedimentation, highly soluble. Um, so there are these types of functionalities that Neutralist pea protein has able to, is able to offer. So let's look at the range of the pea protein isolates that is specifically uh, recommended for dairy alternatives. So we have three grades which is the S85F, and S85XF, and S85+. Plus. So those, uh, you can see the green columns or the outlines. So these are the three grids that are typically recommended for the dairy alternatives application. And really depending on the types of targets, protein content you are looking at, um, whether it's a RTD liquid or powder applications, then we will do the further recommendation. But these are the three uh, general grades that we would recommend depending on your initial needs on the protein contents, the application types. So the next slides will be the um, some concepts, recipes for your inspirations for the uh, dairy alternatives. So we do have 100% pea drinks that is 100% pea. We also have Asian flavored to it, uh, the pandan pea milk. We also have barista that is give you 100% versatility. You know, you can add it directly to coffee or you can foam it, uh, do latte art, and it's also stable. So I'll be going through an example on barista with our neutralized pea proteins uh, after this. So we also have recipes on the chocolate flavored uh, pea drinks. For senior nutrition, we have high protein uh, drinks, uh, RTDs for senior nutrition. Then we also have you know, other types of dairy application, plant-based dairy applications, for example, in plant-based cheese, plant-based ice creams, or even um, cheese spreads. And then also for, for example, in the smoothies types, or even drinking yogurts. So the next slides is to showcase uh, an example for our plant-based barista milk that is uh, formulated with neutralized pea protein. Um, there is no flavor to it, it's original, unflavored. And basically this, you can actually use it uh, in your everyday occasions, be it in your breakfast cereals or in your coffee. Um, so it's really up to individual on the types of occasions that you want to use it. And this slice actually wants to showcase that, you know, for our Neutralist uh, Barista milk, pea milk is highly stable. If you look at the uh, foam stability test, it has very nice high foam and it's also able to sustain. Uh, the foam does not collapse immediately because for usually for plant-based uh, types of proteins that mix into Barista, 
uh, what is important is really the foaming capability and not all plant-based barista milks uh, foams well and able to sustain because when you do latte arts, you need a very nice, very small micro foams that's not those big bubbles. And then if you look at the coffee test, um, we actually, on the left-hand side, is actually the unformed barista pink milks that added directly. And it's also gave a very uh, whitening effect of that. There's no protein curdlings. And on the right-hand side is when we add the foam barista pea milk on it. And it's still a very nice thick foam that you can enjoy, for example, in your cappuccino. Yeah. So I think uh, this will be my second last slide. <laughs> so the benefits of collaborating with Rockets is really that, you know, as Eliza has mentioned, we are a global local team in that sense that, you know, in different locations, uh, for example, in Singapore, in Japan, uh, in China, in India, in US, and also in Europe, we have our customer technical service application teams. We have the teams that works there. And there's also cross sharings of you know, the learnings within Rocket teams that we can tap on or even on the recipes creations that we can develop for our customers. So it's really tapping into Rocket Network's global resources. And what we can help you is really gain speed to markets with our you know, the concepts recipes. And then we also provide concepts inspirations, formulated solutions. For Rocket, we are not only just a uh, pea protein uh, producer, we also have other uh, ingredients. For example, the functional ingredients of the soluble fibers. We also have such solutions. So, and we also have you know, solutions for sugar-free or you know, reduced sugars uh, solution for it. So there are many uh, different types of uh, formulated solutions that we can offer to, to you. And for this case, um, we are really hoping that, you know, you can actually, uh, we are able to offer product differentiation with Neutralis as, you know, as mentioned, the six pillars being that, you know, not a major allergen on, in terms of the sustainability, excellence, uh, plant protein, nutritional qualities. It's also highly digestible in that sense. So the last slides will be just to a quick sharing. That's what Rockets is um, coming up with. So the teams in Singapore, basically there is a um, gastronomy cuisine um, videos that is work in progress and also um, recipes. So you, we are actually working on the plant base uh, like a crab meat bao. So that is a chili crabs bao. And then there's also a uh, plant-based types of wonton noodles on the left-hand side. So it's also high protein noodles. So with a plant-based uh, sort of like a wontons or, you know, more localizations, uh, Singapore edition. Yes, so that ends the sharing. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much, Eliza and Tracy, for your insightful sharing. I think that um, there's a lot for our cohort companies to learn from Rocket and also a lot of areas of opportunities for you all to work together as well. 